goes it guys it's your boy lieutenant dan with a falcons free agent film breakdown that was a mouthful but uh we are going to do this breakdown for you guys um we are looking at the new falcons right guard brandon fusco uh f u s c o fusco uh he's going to be down here uh you're going to see you see your boy down here um, and I'm going to show you just a quick couple of plays. You guys can kind of take away what you want from them, but these are some of the plays that I kind of wanted to highlight. Uh, this first one is going to be a play-action play. And uh, what you're going to see here is he's going to get attacked by number 80, stand his ground. He's going to start losing some of that ground because he gets pushed towards his right-hand side. He's sliding with the defensive lineman, and they run a play-action, double play-action almost. Um, and because the Falcons do a lot of this play action, I wanted to see how Brandon could handle um, something right in his face. And he does pretty well because once the, the play action has been bit on, and that was the whole point of this play, once the play action had been bit on, the guy turns back around and Brandon's right in his face. He's not going anywhere at all. Let's take a look at that one more time. The Brandon knows that this is going to be a play action play. So he wants that, uh, that defensive tackle to bite in on this play and go after the running back uh, so that things can open up and time can open up. So he, he centers himself, anchors himself there and allows the defensive tackle to attack the running back and then anchor him back down when he comes back for another attack again. One more time for you. Bada bing, bada boom, bada pow. Slides to the left. Look, never was controlled by the defensive tackle. Just both have arms linked to each other, kind of battling out. Brandon knows that it's a play action, so he knows that he can bite the guy towards the inside if he wants. Boom, happens. Just holds him right back up, and that was plenty enough time for any quarterback in this league to make a, a good decision down the field. Now, on this play, I want to show you the resiliency of Brandon and how well he's able to um, be attacked by interior defensive linemen or exterior defensive linemen and still stick with someone and push them out of the play. On this, you're going to see him at the top of your screen. He's going to chip inside and help the center um, right there. He chips inside, helps the center right here, and then... There's a, uh, a swim technique and a bat away over to the left-hand side. And you see he doesn't get completely knocked off of his feet. He doesn't get uh, moved off. He actually is able to rebound and go back to that player that did a move on him and then push him right past the quarterback. That's something that I wanted to kind of check to a couple of times and make sure people understood that this guy is solid. He's not great. He's just solid. Solid in my in, in my eyes. Here you see it again. Chip to the inside, uh, push off, swim move back to the outside again, and he just recovers back inside and is able to clamp down. Wes Schweitzer, you weren't able to do that. I'm just saying. Now we're going to see Fusco basically get a, a play here against defensive tackle that a man is present in this play. Not a boy, not some college player, a man, a straight man is here to manhandle a defensive tackle. And while this tape that I'm showing you is not every play of the game, while it may not showcase the best or the worst of Brandon Fusco, I wanted to highlight some of the things that he has done better than Wes Weiser or Ben Garland in that particular setup. So let's take a look here. You're going to see him on this play. Immediately, uh, he's going to be taken high by the defensive tackle. Both guys are going to go high. There's going to be a bull rush here, and Fusco just stands his ground. So when the defensive tackle decides to go towards the inside, Brandon just knocks him right out. Look at that. Look at that. Almost like he's acting like he's a sinner. Look at that. Just pushes him right out of this play and gives them time to make a deep throw down the field. Let's look at it from the other angle. 
here you're going to see Fusco right in the center of your screen next to the uh, to the center. Ball is snapped, and you're going to see that immediate hands to hands 96 and Fusco going right into it in the battle. A little high for my taste, but better than what Wes Swicer has done, which he would have been knocked way into the backfield. He doesn't lose a lot of ground, and when the defensive tackle decides to go towards the inside of the play, Fusco watches him right out. Well done by Mr. Fusco. So one more play that I wanted to show you guys before I get out of here, but another Brandon Fusco play that shows his athleticism and versatility. You're going to see him on this counter play here. If the tackle makes the play, this is actually not even about Brandon Fusco. This is just to show how quickly he can get upfield and how he can open up an area. But if the tackle makes this play, Brandon Fusco pretty much makes the icing on the cake here, the cherry on the top. Let's watch here. So you're going to see Fusco go through the tackle and the defensive end. Boom, right there. And he's going to get to the second level and take on a linebacker. Now, if you see number 62 right here, the tackle, he needs to have this defensive end pushed out. Robert Ningichi. Um, Kim Dichi? Ningichi? I can't even. Ninja, Ninja Gaiden? Um, <laughs> he needs to have this man pushed out. He needs to have him blocked or pushed upfield so that when the running back makes his way up this line right here, Brandon Fusco has done his job and there's a huge hole. Now, the defensive end does a very good job of getting on the inside of the tackle and basically leading the tackle instead of the tackle leading him. So you're going to see Brandon Fusco upfield taking on a linebacker and completely opening the space. You can see the open hole that if this man is blocked right here, it's right up the field and maybe even a touchdown, a touchdown Carlos Hyde. But in this particular instance, Kim Dietschy was able to get the tackle, but you still see Brandon Fusco up here, upfield, taking on guys and pushing them out of the way. Now, we'll look at this play from the other angle, and you can kind of take your tail of the take on how this works out, but you're going to see Fusco here. He's going to split the gap here, right up. And he's going to get that block. Now you see the hole. If the defensive end is blocked, this is, a, is an easy gainer. Or, obviously, from this particular angle, you could see maybe a cutback back towards the outside on the right-hand side of the play, left-hand side of the defense. But it just shows you how quickly Fusco can go in between a... Uh, defensive tackle and a defensive end split the field and go up on these plays and whenever I watch these type of plays right there you can see him right there whenever I watch these plays I think about how Tevin Coleman and Devontae Freeman and this style of running because this is Kyle Shanahan style of running this style of running is so similar to what Atlanta does and it's so it's so important to have versatility in your guards and tackles to be able to pull them to be able to have them shoot up field up gaps and block linebackers in the second level and maybe even become lead blockers at the third level if they're in front of their running backs. That's so important for Atlanta's scheme and what they do as an offensive line. That's why it's important to note that Fusco is up on the second level, creating this gap right here and creating an area. Look, this center and this right tackle are nowhere near the level of capability that Alex Mack and Ryan Schrader pretty much show on a week-to-week, day-to-day basis playing for Atlanta. Those two players are much better. And Fusco made these players look better. Now, why? I have no idea why San Francisco wanted to walk away from Brandon Fusco. But to be honest with you, if they didn't want to pay for his services, I am glad that he's with Atlanta because it's an immediate impact upgrade and may be one of the most impactful signings we'll have made in, in a, quite a few years, um, uh, I'll put this up there probably with the Alex Mack signing if this works out uh, because the versatility he shows is great. Again, nothing overly impressive, just solid performance all around, and that's what I like about Brandon Fusco. 
please do go hit the subscribe button hit the like button if you like this content if you're not already following the channel that subscribe button is huge go in the comment section tell me what you think of Brandon Fusco if you looked at a couple plays that maybe you think that I missed or some highlighted stuff that you like about Brandon Fusco again all of those options are available if you want to share this content with your friends family and other Falcons uh, supporters please do uh, bring them in here we're on a drive to five 5k uh, we still haven't gotten the 2k yet but we're on the drive to five my mindset's already there um, and please by all means check out the rest of my video catalog that you can check out on the channel here on YouTube check me out UNGR underscore show on Twitter and on Instagram and as I say on all of my videos um, nothing but the facts nothing but the truth that's what I'm bringing to you Falcons fans and all the NFL fans around the world hashtag be the media peace out grease out rise up Thank you.